morning everyone it's time for a bit of an update not only on Tammy and her lambs but also just what's going on here we've had no further lambs so far so today we've got a pretty long list of things to do we're gonna finish up chores here the boys are busy forking hay actually the whole family's out here right now there's Amy Ray with her very favorite sheep Tammy this is champ oh I forgot to tell you, we named the bottle feed Champ. Okay, that's the new name. <laughs> Introducing Champ. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Is that a good name, Nigel? Yeah. Awesome, right? Yeah. He's going to be the Champ. Okay, yeah. So we're going to get this tractor started. As you can see, almost all the hay that we've put down the center of this alleyway is cleaned up. A few clumps here that we're going to quickly spread out. And then we're going to bring another five or six bales in here. Hey guys. These girls are looking good. So we're gonna place six bales down in this aisle. Just gonna let the tractor warm up a little bit. I'll get you a close up here on Tammy for a minute. Might as well bring her a little bit of fresh hay while I'm at it here. Did you already feed her some grain, Isaac? So she already got her, her corn ration. As you can see, she's got actually lots of hay in here already, but... Here's Tammy. Here's her cute little lambs. Hey, little guy. The hay is Hey, little guy. Little guy or girl? I'm not sure yet. Let's see what we've got for a ratio so far. This is a female. Tammy. Yeah, you don't like me touching your lambs, huh? Oh, another female. So we got two females Yay. and Champ is a male. So we've got two females and a male so far. So as you can see, these lambs are looking good because you can tell they're perky. They're up and around. Yesterday we saw them jumping around a little bit. It's amazing how quick they're, uh, they're up and uh, able to skip around even though they're still very young. She's very protective, as you can see, of her lambs. She's an extremely good mother. Very uh, concerned about what we're doing here. And as you can see what she's doing, she's sniffing. And one of the primary methods of a mother and her babies, of them knowing each other, is the smell. They have a very good sense of smell. They don't have a very good sense of sight. So they really use their smell um, sense the most almost of, of all their senses especially when it comes to identifying their their own lambs so that's why it's very important that they identify who their lambs are right from the start <laughs> hey there are you curious hmm? Oh, hey Hazel. I don't know if you've ever been introduced yet, but this is our dog Hazel. She's a purebred golden retriever. She is a super sweet dog. She's the most uh, kind animal you could ever find. She really wouldn't hurt a flea. Well, I shouldn't say that. She can eat squirrels and stuff like that. She had one the other day. Um, and interesting note she might be expecting puppies believe it or not she's actually due a lot the same time as um most of these ewes are due right in the middle of february so to add 
to our busyness of lambing, we're also going to have whelping. That's what dogs do, right? So, yeah. Oh, watch out, guys. Yeah, so we're expecting puppies. I think she's pregnant. We didn't actually get her preg checked at the vet or anything. She was bred by a standard poodle. So we're expecting to have some golden doodle puppies in the middle of February. So that's super exciting for the family. Um, and uh, we're lo really looking forward to that. This is her first litter. And uh, hopefully that goes well. So this is a first time thing for us. Isaac's just uh, pulling the quick release on the bucket there so I can switch to the forks. And then we're gonna go pick up some of those, those square bales that we just bought, so. The ground is nice and frozen, so we're out of the mud. That's awesome. Sometimes the quick attach doesn't work super good. There we go. So I've got the manure forks on this time because uh, when I use my other forks, which have only two prongs that would go, they only just catch the bale. They go here and they go like here and I end up dropping the bale half the time. Um, and I have to pick it up this way in order for it to fit in the alleyway properly. If I put it widthwise across the aisle, it's very hard to feed from. So that's why I got to pick it up from the end. Um, and I'm going to try using this, these forks instead, because uh, I'll get a lot more forks engaged in the bale here. And uh, yeah, that'll work better. Hey, hey cow, how are ya? So his name is Cow, because it's black and white. <laughs> so we got five bales in the aisle here. So that'll last us probably another four to five days because it's about a bale a day that we've been using which I think is not too bad for feeding 300 sheep um, so this is good sleeping over there let's take a look this lamb is in oblivion look at that what a cute little guy Don't worry, girl. We're never going to hurt them. We're not going to hurt them. Okay? So we pretty well wrapped up chores for this morning. 
one of the things we want to do is get Champ out of the utility room where we've been kind of babying him and getting him off to a good start. And we want to get him in a pen with Tammy and her lambs. You know, Champ needs some playmates, right? So the difficulty is um, if we take her out of that pen, which we really want to do as well, she needs a water bowl and the water bowl's right over there. But we also want to keep her separate from all these other ewes. So we'd have to put a partition across here to that water bowl and give her this whole pen. When we do that, we also lose bunk space for 10 ewes right here which uh, is not ideal because we're at like max capacity in this barn and that means that those 10 ewes that normally would eat there now have to fight for space tight space all the way along here so it's just not ideal being this full we might end up moving some sheep to my driving shed at least until they're ready to lamb which isn't until like next may so we might have to do that in order to free up some space in here but i still think we can do something here that's a little more temporary until more of lamb and we can make this pen a little bit bigger so that's one thing we got to do the other thing we got to do is fix that door at the far end here it won't slide down right now and if we do get a really windy cold day we usually like to close that side right up so that we don't get such a huge breeze and draft blowing through this barn especially for these smaller lambs and then another thing we have to do is we have to get all of these ewes vaccinated this vaccination should take place about four to six weeks before they lamb so obviously with the ewes like Tammy and the ones that are just a couple weeks out, we're a little bit late. But because this lambing is stretched over probably six to eight, if not 10 weeks, we kind of have to pick a happy medium. And this is when we're actually just able to get to it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to vaccinate them all. There's going to be some that aren't going to get 100% the benefit of the vaccination and be able to pass it off through the colostrum to their offspring. Usually you want to give it at least four to six weeks to get full protection for those young ones in their first, I would say, I think it's about six weeks of their life. They will actually, the, the vaccine will go through the colostrum of the mother to those lambs and protect them for about six to eight weeks of their first, uh, their first six to eight weeks. Then they gotta be vaccinated. So these are just for the common problems that lambs or sheep can have. I don't even know what they all are. I just know it's vet recommended and it's just common practice among sheep farmers to do it. I guess very similar to humans where we do have certain things that we just automatically tend to vaccinate for, for protection. Hey, he is gonna be one tame little guy, isn't he? Okay, so we made a little pen here. It gives them all a little more space. We put Champ in here so he has some companions to frolic with, you know? There he is. He's nice and perky. They'll figure this out pretty quick. Their boundaries. She's still pretty serious about not keeping him as her lamb. And I think he'll find that out quick enough. He still thinks he wants her, but... <laughs> Oops, wrong lamb there. You'll see as we get into our lambing period more and we actually take like five or ten ewes out at a time and uh, by then they all know who their lambs are but everybody's there's always this sense of confusion and these these ewes will just ram whoever whoever is not their lamb out of the way and it seems rather vicious and uh, ridiculous but it's just uh, they figure it out and they sort it out so this seems cruel to be putting champ in there but it's not really at all they learn that you know we basically become his mother. We're his food source and she no longer is or she probably never was. So, you know, they'll figure it out and uh, they'll be just fine. So we're just gonna give Champ here, uh, just remind him that don't worry, we're gonna continue to keep feeding him while he's in here. Hey. You, just so he knows that we're his food source and not Tammy. Oop. Still getting used to the bottle a little bit. <laughs> Maybe go out there more with them. Here. 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 
pedo, güey. There he is. A little more, champ. A little bit more left in there. Don't hold it quite so tipped. There he's up. You gotta love the little shaky tail there. Okay. Good. So we're just grabbing the long ladder here so that we can get up to that top of that door over here just to see exactly what's wrong with it and what's going on. Oats and peas. Have you ever eaten oats or peas before? Oatmeal? You've eaten oats before. Peas? You know what peas are? They're these little green vegetables. They're really round, like little balls. That's basically what this is. Should we try to eat some? See how it tastes? Don't spit on the camera, Dad. It doesn't taste at all like the peas and oats I've eaten before. Mm. But then again, we don't eat the seed here. These sheep are eating the leaf and the stem. But this is kind of good to smell. If you were to smell it, if you were right here, you'd say, hmm, I could almost eat that. That's probably why these sheep here are enjoying it so much. How does it taste, Curtis? Like grass. Like grass. Have you had grass before? Yeah. Really? Okay. I guess Curtis actually likes grass. He's had grass he before. I liked it. Oh, he doesn't like it, but he's had grass before. Hey, Blackie. Hey, Blackie. How's it going? Yeah, you like that, eh? Ew, that's, ew, that's grass. It's not nice. Yeah. Ready for action. We are going to vaccinate these ewes as I spoke about this morning. And uh, we recently just picked up this new vaccinating gun. As you can see right here, I've got enough to do almost the whole barn. And this thing automatically meters out exactly how much we need. So we're gonna give it a shot. I've never used this one before. <laughs> give it a shot. <laughs> Literally a shot, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And uh, we'll also take a few shots of it with the camera. Uh, also taking a camera shot. Yeah, right. whatever. So we, um, as you can see, it's a very short needle. Um, the idea is to do it subcutaneous, which means uh, it has to go underneath the skin. So basically between their skin and their muscle. So this is not uh, intramuscular, which would be in the muscle. This is sub -Q. So that's the goal. The goal is to pull the skin back, put the needle through the skin and get it between their skin and their muscle. Oh, just keep it there. It's over. I'll keep this away from you guys. This one here has a little bit, but very little. So she's probably three and a half months away yet. So this is an example of one that we're gonna put in a separate group because of course she's black, so it's hard to mark. That's good enough. There we go. Open the back gate. Okay, I'll open this up so that more can come in. All right. And got new ones. Hey, heads up. And we got some in. Come on, ladies. And we need some more. Gotta push them up a little, guys. There's one. There's another. There we go. Okay. And there's the last ones. So these ones that we put in this pen, we just finished vaccinating. And the ones that we put in this pen here, they're on the opposite side of the barn of these guys. And all the ones that were on this side of all those ones, we uh, took the ones that looked the least pregnant 
that are just starting to bag up so they're probably still three months away from lambing we put them all in one section on this side right here so that we don't have to try if they do lamb to get them across and join the ones that had already lambed so now that we've got them separated all the ones that are on this side are the ones that are most likely to lamb the earliest which is probably three quarters of them. Now we're just able to clean up this whole handling system, get it all out of the way. That's why we had it sitting here for so long because we still had to do this job. Now that that's done, we can get it cleaned up and focus on getting ready for lambing. All right guys, so we've come to the end of our video. We managed to get that vaccinating all finished. That went very well, very smoothly. And uh, now we're heading home for coffee and after that, we'll probably just get to some chores and that'll be the end of the day. So we just want to say thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.